I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rhema Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rhema Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Well, it's that time again, Rhema Praise. I'm so glad to be with you today, and we have a great program in, in store. In fact, Miss Lynette is going to give us the message today. <laughs> That's right. Um, and this message is, what is your issue? Yeah, what is your issue? <laughs> you know, I was, uh, actually, I took uh, the uh, scriptures from the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. And you know, so many times I hear you preach that sermon uh, on healing. And it, yeah. and uh, certainly that and is. And the King James, the old King James said that she had an issue of blood. That's right. She had an issue of blood. But then I was thinking of the fact that, she had an issue of blood, but we all have issues right. of some kind. In life, we have In all life. kinds of issues we face. Yes, and it's uh, so important. Uh, in our issues, so many times we need to change those things. Right. If you have a cantankerous uh, disposition, well, you need to change it. We need it. to change it, get, don't we? Get a little more friendly disposition. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and so it's so important to what I like to call face your issue. Right. Face it. Do something uh, about well, it. Well, many times people, uh, they want to do something about it, but they just procrastinate and just never do anything about it. Uh, they'll keep telling people, oh yeah, I'm going to change, but they yes. never change. No, that's, and so it's so very important to do that. But lest I just preach the sermon right here, let's go right now where I am speaking on what is your issue. This morning, I want you to turn to Mark 5. Mark 5. A familiar story that you've heard many times, starting with verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue, I want you to concentrate on that word issue, issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt on her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman... Fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Once again, Mark 5, 25 says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years, an issue. You see, this woman had an issue that needed to be removed from her life. And she had had this issue for 12 years. And all of a sudden, you know, the passion on the inside of her says, I want this issue removed. I am willing to get out of my comfort zone to go where I'm not even supposed to go and find a way to see my issue resolved. I want to ask you a question. This is a, not a hilarious sermon, but I want to tell you what. It will get you to the place that we all must get to, as I said, to reap what we desire to reap. I want to ask you the questions. What kind of issues do you need removed from your life? 
What issue are issues? Most of us have issues, plural, you know. Do you need to be removed from your life? And you may say, oh, well, I don't have any issues. You're probably the very one that does. <laughs> you know, over in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit, love, oh, my. Ignore that one, huh? Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, yeah. What about your love walk? What about your patience? These are issues, guys. What about your stubbornness, now that's okay if it's used in the right way. It's okay if it's used against the enemy. And I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. You know, Brother Hagen told his stories over and over and over again. I can tell my stories. <laughs> Wesley gives me so many illustrations. I just love it. So one time when he was... About five, I think he was. And Wesley is a, he's like his nana. He's pretty strong-willed. Like I say, that's okay if you use it in the right direction. But Denise was really just frustrated at him. And all of a sudden, and he just has this twinkle in his eye. He still has that little twinkle in his eye. I said, don't ever lose that twinkle. It just makes Nana smile. So there's this little twinkle in his eye. And so Denise was frustrated at him. And she said, Wesley, you are so stubborn. He looked at, up at her and said, Mommy, what does stubborn mean? She said, when you get your mind made up about something, nothing or no one's going to change you. He looked up at her again with that little twinkle in his eye, and he said, oh, yeah, I got a lot of stubborn. I got a lot of stubborn. <laughs> well, at least he admitted it, you know? You know, have you ever walked up to a person, and usually that person is really jovial, really happy, and you just say, simply say hello, and they bite your head off? And you will probably say to them, like I said, well, what is your issue? You know, what is, you, what is your issue? Um, or have you ever, you know, been on a committee, head of a committee, and you start thinking about people that you might want to add to that committee, and somebody suggests somebody, and somebody else says, oh, no, I don't want them on this committee. They have a lot of issues. They have a lot of issues. You know, you've probably said to your spouse, what's your issue? Or to your children, what's your issue? You know, so many times we want to point out everyone else's issue. But we want to ignore our issues. We want to ignore our issues. This morning as I am speaking, I want you to quit rationalizing about your issues and determine to do something about them. Determine to do something about them. Once again, I want to ask you the question, what is your issue? What is your issue? You know, God has plans for this church. God has plans for you to be used for the plans that he has for us as Rhema Bible Church. Jeremiah 29, 11, and I have quote this a lot in the New Living Translation. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. 
In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. And I like the message translation of that 13. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else. As I said, if we're going to carry out the plans that God has for Rhema Bible Church and for you individually, we've got to get rid of our issues. You know, it's very difficult to help someone else to get healed of things when you need healing yourself. So we've got to chop out all the weeds, all the pests that would keep us from fulfilling what God has for us. Well, how do we do that? Number one, you must face your issue. Number one, you must face your issue. James 1.25 in the, I'm sorry, James 1, starting with verse 22 in the Amplified. I like to read the Amplified. Be you doers of the word. Obey the message and not merely listeners to it. Betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. It says, be ye doers of the word. Oh, you know what? We've heard the word over and over and over again from this pulpit. But let me ask you a question. Are you being a doer of the word? Are you being a doer of the word? It says, for if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it, and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror, for he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. Yeah, that happens so many times. You know, we hear the word, oh God, yes, I'm going to change that. We're here in church and we're going to change that. And then we leave and forget all about it, and we're the same person that we've been. And he says, but, verse 25, but he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, and is faithful to it, and, and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he shall be blessed and his doing his life of obedience. Now, I want to read that actually in the Passion Translation. In the Passion Translation. And actually, I want to start with verse 21 of James 1. I love what this says. It says, so this is why we abandon everything morally impure and all forms of wicked conduct. Instead, with a sensitive spirit, we absorb God's word, which has been implanted within our nature. For the word of life has power to continually deliver us. You see, the Word of God will deliver you from all the issues that you have if you'll just let that Word become alive in you. It says, don't just listen to the Word of truth and not respond to it, for that is the essence of self-deception. So always let His Word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life. If you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, you become like the person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover the reflection of his face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word. You see, that's how God sees you, is how the word says that you should be. But then you go out and forget your divine origin. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessings in all that they do. Verse 26, 
If someone believes they have a relationship with God but fails to guard his words, then his heart is drifting away and his religion is shallow and empty. True spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make a difference, listen to this, to make a difference in the lives of the orphans and widows in their troubles and to refuse to be corrupted by the world's values. You see, we have been designed to help others. To not be corrupted by the world's values and oh my goodness, woo! Did you ever believe that the values of this world and even closer to home, the United States of America would be what they are? It's so very important that we are not corrupted. Not corrupted. You know, in the natural, every morning we get up and you, may, you know, I don't know what you do the first thing in the morning, but every morning when we get up, there's at some point in that morning that we come face to face with a mirror. Yeah, at least I trust you do. You know, most of us, I know myself, when I get that first look, you know, in the mirror, oh my goodness, I look really scary. Hair all sticking out. The makeup that I didn't get off, black eyes, you know. Ladies, you're probably trying to find your eyelashes and your eyebrows. <laughs> I know, guys, you don't understand about that. <laughs> but, you know, facing our mirror first thing in the morning is not a pleasant experience, is it? Mirrors are very honest little things. They don't cover up. They don't compromise. They don't gloss over our d defects and tell us that we're better looking than what we really are. No, no, they don't. They show us every wart, every wrinkle, every gray hair, and every zit. <laughs> In fact, the better the mirror, the more flaws that we see. But why do we look in the mirror? Because as, un as unpleasant as it may be, if we don't take a look at ourselves and do something about it, the world is going to see that morning face. I don't know about you, but I don't want the world to see my morning face. So we face the truth. We make the necessary changes that it takes to make ourselves presentable to the world and like I like to say it so they can recognize my natural beauty. <laughs> so, far too long we have not faced our issues and done something about them. Face your issues. May not be a sin, but do you always want to have everything go your way? Uh oh. Are you a person that's not flexible? Uh huh. Yeah. This is the way it's got to be done. Are you slow to change? Are you never on time? Oh, these are issues, guys. These are issues. What about your prayer life? What about reading the Word of God? What about, do you have a miserable disposition that nobody wants to be around? You need to recognize your issues, face your issues Far too long. We've ignored the issues, thinking that it, they would go away. Uh-uh. 
They're not going to go away unless we do something about it. You know, sometimes we blamed our issues on someone else. Uh Uh-huh, playing the blame game. We pretended that we did not have issues. Like I said, you must recognize the fact before you can do anything about the situation. It's like my husband said, you got to recognize that you need healing before you can do anything about it. You got to recognize the fact, okay, I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. I have got an issue. This lady, this little lady with the issue of blood, she realized that she had an issue and she was determined to do something about that issue. She faced the issue. Number two, don't cover up the issue. Don't cover up the issue. Many sometimes face the issue, but they proceed to cover up the issue instead of working through the issue. When you do that, you hurt yourself as well as those around you. God wants you to be a whole person. You know, so many times people pretend to be something that they're not in hopes that the issue will resolve itself. They pretend to be something that they're really not. Have you been deceiving yourself for so long that you actually believe that you're something or, or someone else? I say it this way, be who you are. Be who you are. Some people have an issue with the social status that they grew up in. You know, they are afraid that someone won't accept them if they know that they didn't grow up in the same social status. Don't be ashamed of where you came from. Don't be afraid. So... Number one, face your issue. Number two, don't cover up your issue. Number three, don't be afraid. As you have faced your issues, you have overcome your issues, don't be afraid to share those issues and how you overcome them with someone else. Don't be afraid to share with others, to help others in their issues. You know, often, you know, you think, well, if I let somebody know who, what I went through, then they won't think as highly of me as they ought. Sharing your issues and how you've overcome them will help someone. Know that the Lord wants to help you in every issue of your life. If you will just ask him, Ask him how you can eliminate some of the issues, how you can take care of all of those issues in your life. He will help you in every situation. I know that many times I have known in my own life, Lord, I need help in this area. I know this is an issue and you're going to have to help me to know what to do about it. He is always there to help you. So just look to him. He is your best friend. He is your best counselor and he will help you resolve all of the issues in your life. And you know, our our product offer will help yes, deal that's right. with the things that you're talking about. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Dad's book, Casting Your Care Upon the Lord. Because that is an issue. Yeah, that's, you know? Some people carry too much care and the Lord won't, doesn't want you to. No. Our, then Another my, issue. <laughs> my book is How to Live Worry Free. That's right. That's an issue as well. And then I have a CD, The Prison Doors Open, and uh, and then uh, your CD. Certainly is an issue, yeah, right? Do I really have to forgive? So <laughs> yes. all of these go right along with what you were talking Absolutely. about. And all of those can be had for a gift of $25 or more. Just go to your computer and go to rhema.org and yes. you can order. That's the best way. Now you yes. can you can write.
write in if you want to. Or you can call. Or you can call. Yes. But uh, the best way is to just order it on the computer because it, it gets out faster that way. Because that, it, yes, yeah. it does. Well, Living Faith Conference yep. next week. We're going to be in Hayward, California, yeah. January the 22nd through the 24th. That's a Sunday night through a Tuesday night. Heart of the Bay Christian Center, Pastors Mark and Brenda Thomas. Uh, you can go to rhema.org slash LFC and for get all, all the information. details. Yes. Now we're going to drop down to Southern California at Marietta and uh, Jan January the 25th through the 27th. That's yes. Wednesday night through Friday night at West Coast Life Church with Pastors Ray Jean and Beth Wilson. We are so excited to be able to yes. get out. To, we haven't seen our friends in California for a couple, three years now, and we're so excited to get back out there. Hey, if you're in either one of those areas up in Northern California, there by Hay Hayward's there yes. in the Bay Area. That's yes. where Hayward's at. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Marietta's down in Southern California and, and <laughs> what they call the Los Angeles area. But uh, we we would be glad to see you. So, hey, come out and see us. If you have friends, let them know about it, okay? Yes, and plan now, right now, to come to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, which yeah. is a suburb of In Tulsa. February, February In the 19th through the 24th, Sunday night through Friday night. Yes. At Winter Bible Seminar. That's right. And Homecoming, we yes. call it for all the Rhema grads. Uh, from all over the world, they uh -huh. come, and and this year we got more coming from from our Ramas in the 280 something campuses worldwide because uh, restrictions have been, have lifted, been lifted and yes. people can travel now, which, yes. which you couldn't before. You can go to rama.org/wbs and register right right now. So let me say this: we want to thank all of you for helping us to bring. Hope, Hope, help, help and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. With wrong thinking, it will create wrong believing and you'll still remain in the prison house. You've got to have right thinking in order to create right believing in order to create action that will release you from the prison. The Prison Door is Open, an anointed CD by Kenneth W. Hagan. Plus the book, How to Live Worry-Free by Kenneth W. Hagan, and the slimline book, Casting Your Cares Upon the Lord by Kenneth E. Hagan. Forgiveness in the life of a Christian, it's not an option, it's a command. And Do I Really Have to Forgive? A powerful CD by Lynette Hagan. Both the books and the CDs can be yours today for a gift of only $25 or more. Just call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.